All right, hello everyone. My name's Anne Marie. I coordinate the Street Outreach DAO. And I'm gonna pull this up. Nice. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So first off, our goal is to build connections with unhoused people and connect them to resources and services. But before you can build a connection, you have to build trust. Many of you probably know that people who live outside, this is something they deeply struggle with. So luckily, through our DAO, We've started off our street outreach events in partnership with existing orgs who are already doing this work and they already have relationships built with their community that lives outside. Mm. So when we prove to people that we are sincerely here to help them with no strings attached, it can help people heal. And so through the start of this DAO, we've invested our time and energy helping existing orgs, like I mentioned. One of them is YWAM, Youth with a Mission. And they're amazing. They've been doing street outreach for almost 30 years in the Tenderloin. So for our first official outreach event, we took members of our We Heart Asef meetup it's a weekly meetup that's here and we hit the streets so ywam took us under their wing they trained us they gave us some history of that neighborhood and they equipped us with hot cocoa and we went outside so we went about an hour 20 of us and then we had our mentors from ywam teach us and it was incredible it was a short amount of time, one afternoon, but just being able to give people hot cocoa, show them that we care, connect them to immediate resources if they need and are ready for them, and also invite them to come back to the Ellis Room at YWAM for future events. So this was all timed perfectly with San Francisco's Section 8 waitlist lottery opportunity. So it was perfect. The stars were aligned. So. We had little flyers, invited them back to a housing workshop we were hosting the next day, and it was so nice for people not only to come in seeking services, but to spread the word, bring a bunch of buddies in, like, okay, we're all signing up for housing together. So connecting people to housing is just one of the many services that Street Outreach is here to bring together. Um, so if anyone here has communities, networks, churches, people that could volunteer who want to help their neighbors more, please come and find me because we wanna scale this so the work that we do can be replicated in other cities. So existing services and resources can just be boosted up and we can empower as many unhoused people to help others and go on and on and on. Oh, nice, thanks. Thank you, Anne Marie. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the stage Kent McCormick, who is coordinating for the Recovery DAO. Hi guys, how's it going? Ooh, that's loud. They picked just about the worst picture of me ever. I look, I look surprised. <laughs> it's terrifying. What an amazing band we have here. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm less scary in person. I promise. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm just I, I have a great honor of just sharing with you guys today a little bit about this Recovery DAO. 30 seconds, I only have two minutes, two minutes and 30 seconds left, okay. I've got 12 years of experience working in recovery and in recovery spaces in the Tenderloin District. And I'm really excited to carry that into what we're doing here at House of Web3. Um, I always say success for us is really simple, right? We wanna end homelessness, but part of that is focusing on the individuals, right? Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna end homelessness one life at a time, and we wanna see people happy and healthy and whole. And part of that is inviting people into a recovery journey. We want to see people walking in freedom and living purpose-filled lives. Um, and so that's really the heart of what I'm talking about when I talk about recovery, is inviting people into wholeness 
And we understand, anyone who's been through recovery knows, addiction is just a symptom of a much deeper problem. And we want to build bridges to resources that will address those deeper problems. Does that make sense? And so we don't have to reinvent the wheel right away, right? There are so many great people in this city, in this room, doing incredible work in the recovery space. Amen? And, and we, don't, we don't need to, to recreate everything. We want to start by building bridges to those places that are already doing that really great work. So we're about to launch our recovery now starting in December, right? It's really exciting. It's a big deal. And, and what we're doing right now is we're focusing on building a really great team, identifying some key goals, and then building really solid streamlined bridges to those amazing resources in our city. And so I want to get to know you guys because some of you are already doing great work. And we want to use this great technology to do really wonderful things and change lives and end homelessness in our city, okay? Yes. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna work together. I'm shaking a little bit, it's because you're all a lot prettier than I expected. So, <laughs> um, but that said, I just wanna, I wanna, my call to action is this. If this is something you're passionate about, if you wanna see people walking in freedom and see lives transformed, join us. I, we can't do this alone. I need your brilliant minds and your passion so that this DAO can be something really special. So please come. We don't have all the answers, but I think together we can get a lot closer, right? I'm not a, I'm not a genius. I mostly hang out with unhoused dudes on the streets in the Tenderloin, and I just want to see lives change, and I want to learn from you guys. And I think that's really the posture we want to have in all these DAOs, is let's learn from each other and do the best work we can do together to really make a difference. Amen? Awesome. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ken. Thank you so much. All right, I'd like to welcome to the stage Dan Cordy, who is representing the Transitional Housing DAO. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm slide free. Uh, the Transitional Housing DAO, that's an extension of a previous project that I co-founded along with Anne Marie in Oakland. We built 15 emergency up-to-code tiny homes. And additionally, we co-founded another project that built and operated a community kitchen, clinic, and free store in what was Northern California's largest encampment. And for success metrics outside of that, five of the 15 individuals that we housed are now in permanent affordable housing. And this was all done as a 100% volunteer run and crowdfunded project. And through our work, we valued including the voices of those that were being served, and that's something we're continuing as we design and develop the DAO. And the DAO's first project is Tree Ring Village, which is a one-year transitional housing program that will include 12 tiny homes, three service structures for wellness, workforce development, and community programming. We have partnerships with reputable organizations to assist with recovery, physical and mental health, mentorship, workforce development, food, and housing navigation. Our DAO is collaboratively growing through bi-weekly meetings. This helps us to improve our design. The meetings also allow us to receive inputs from the population being served, along with Bay, Bay Area residents who are passionate about contributing to the development of effective solutions for our unsheltered neighbors. We're regularly joined by leaders of Youth Spirit Artworks, which is a transitional tiny home program that is an inspiration to what we are building. Their project serves unhoused youth in Oakland, and the insights they've shared from their experience is incredibly valuable. The DAO is being built in public using GeoBrowser, which you all learned about a little bit ago. And the value in this approach is the focus on transparency and accountability. And once we have Tree Ring Village successfully operating, it will allow for others to more easily learn from our experiences and replicate the model in additional communities facing the same needs. We're currently focused on land acquisition and have been exploring various properties with the Alameda County Treasurer and reaching out to churches with excess land that are open to exploring housing, op housing solutions. Our current timeline is to acquire land by the end of 2023, begin construction early 2024, and start operations summer of 2024. This work is incredibly important to me, following being homeless and living outside in San Francisco a decade ago. Having been through this experience, I see the value in designing ethical solutions that empower individuals to grow into living a life of purpose. If you want to hear more about our previous work in Oakland, 
learn more about the design for Tree Ring Village, have any leads on land, or just want to get tapped in with the DAO, talk to us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. All right, for our next DAO, we have Morgan DeSalt with the Mentorship DAO. <laughs> Woohoo! Hi, so I'm Morgan Duso. I actually, my full time job is working with the Salvation Army, and my passion is really investing in people, inspiring hope and change because I was actually one of those people that was lost and thought to be maybe lost beyond help. And, you know, I went to a program uh, run by the Salvation Army, it changed my life. So my whole goal in this world now is to make that journey easier for others and to help people find their hope as well. So through, the, um, through meeting this amazing group and already working on what we're working with um, at the Salvation, or working on with the Salvation Army, an initiative that Major Darren Norton's gonna share a little bit about more um, later after lunch, um, we've developed this extended recovery program. And through that recovery program, one, we really realized that you know, we can get people clean and sober and we can help them regain their lives. But what happens to them after that? We need to help upskill them and get them ready to take those next steps. And in addition to that, everybody needs a community of support and a network of support. Every one of us in this room has people that we can point to that have helped shape our path, our journey, and our life. And a lot of the population that we work with they're formerly homeless individuals, justice involved, survivors of human trafficking, and people with addiction and dual diagnosis, we realize they don't have that community of support. And if they do, it might be toxic and unhealthy. So I think it, uh, it, you were saying earlier that your family is you know, sometimes your chosen family, right? And so what we really believe in is building that community of support providing that family, that tribe, that network that our clients so desperately need so that they can realize their full potential. And so through this mentorship, our, our goal is to deliver skills-led volunteerism and organically foster mentorships through those opportunities. And so we'll be providing courses where you can come in, volunteer your time, use, lend your time and talent to really help elevate these individuals that we're working with. And this isn't just limited to people in the Salvation Army. We want to start opening those doors for anyone in recovery or anybody that's trying to take those next steps in their life. So, so basically the goal is to inspire change, make an impact, and take action. And so one of those ways that we're doing that is um, we piloted a women's empowerment group. Because sometimes the best mentorship opportunities happen organically by people connecting in people and people investing in people. And so through this, we bring dynamic individuals and female leaders in the community. We bring our participants alongside these women. We have a fun little social hour. We go out and do an activity together. So mentorship could look like that for you. You could actually start a group for men, for women bring participants from these programs into a social setting, get to know one another. And you know, a lot of times we do like a little icebreaker and getting to know you. And um, then we'll do something fun. This Friday, in fact, we're going to the symphony and I actually have a few more tickets available. So if you'd like to be a part of that, we would love to have you. And through these events, we realized that some really powerful, powerful connections were being made. These women were being seen, they were being heard and they were meeting some really dynamic leaders, female leaders in the community that they could look up to. And some of the girls afterwards said to me, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it, and I wasn't even sure that I wanted to stay, but now I'm not going anywhere. This time together gave me hope. <laughs> so sometimes you don't need to be a subject matter expert in this space, you don't need to be a social worker, you just need to be present and care. So that's what we want to provide is an open space where people from the community can be invited in to be part of the solution and part of changing real lives. So if you're interested in coming alongside this and being a cheerleader and a champion for someone else, we'd love to have you, we'd love to connect with you, and we'd love to share more. Thanks Thank so much. You. Thank you, Morgan.
And finally, we have Yan Chen representing the Workforce Development DAO. Hello. I'm Yan. I'm a designer, and I'm also um, at YWIM San Francisco in the Tenderloin. And um, I've also been helping to coordinate the Workforce Development Group over the last few months, starting in August. And so some of the things that we've been doing have been setting up the processes to get started. So both in terms of the trainee side, how do we bring someone in, how do we um, assess where they're at and what they need next. And also, how do we um, help them along the coaching process? Um, what are our criteria for coaches? And um, what kind of curriculum can we give them to help them have um, their conversations with our trainees? And also creating a database of potential employment and training opportunities. And going forward, um, or at least we're starting out with people who are at risk or recently unhoused, and um, developing this program, and of course, working across all of the different DAOs um, to um, meet people where they're at. And um, going forward, we want to refine this process and then eventually scale that and um, across different populations and also geographies. And so if, um, yeah, if you're interested in this, there's so many of you with so much experience here in this area, so we would love to learn from you and collaborate with you. Currently, we have um, applications from across the Bay Area. We have a handful that we're starting with um, to help refine this process and, um, you know, to, to scale, it requires collaboration from all of us. And so um, let's chat more after this. And then you might be wondering how all of this might be connected and how all of that is um, enabled by technology. So one thing that we're working on is this thing called Ellis. It's an app. Um, and it's, um, yeah, and the back end will be Geo Browser. Um, and it really came from this question of how might we help people experiencing homelessness take the next steps to um, on their journey to restoration. And the, um, the problem that we were really trying to address actually came up during COVID when there was so much uncertainty across the city, well, across the world, really, but specifically um, our experience in the Tenderloin was all hours and services were changing like every day and it was almost impossible to keep up with um, what all the changes were. And the directories that were out there um, are mostly like well-intended um, sort of people who have created a directory without any input from, or without like direct input from service providers, where service providers aren't necessarily filling in their own information. And especially in the chaos of COVID, um, it meant that, um, you know, that might mean like someone's calling like 30 numbers to try and find one resource or sending someone to something that's actually closed. And it was creating a lot of inefficiencies, which meant people that were not getting helped, which actually ultimately long-term means a giant growing backlog for the system. And so um, really it was just, it came down to inaccurate or outdated information about service. Um, availability made it difficult for staff and volunteers to effectively and efficiently refer clients to the services that they need. And so one thing that came out of it was Ellis, which is a relationship and service manager for service providers to meet our marginalized neighbors' needs more efficiently and effectively. And a part of that is, well, we don't need to create more work for service providers. That's the last thing we want to do. Everyone's way too busy. <laughs> And also, um, there isn't a uniform system that everyone is on. So there's, a, there's various needs um, that also created an opportunity to align incentives and um, for us to try different ways to align those incentives. And so the relationship part is also because, um, you know, depending on the size of the organization, larger organizations might have in-house um, software like white label that serves case management needs, whereas smaller ones might be relying on pen and paper and maybe just their memory. And um, that also created a lot of inefficiencies in the system where, you know, one person might have three case managers across different organizations, whereas others might have none. 
And so this was kind of designed in the hopes of solving a few different issues. And um, for the service provider, because we don't want to create extra work, we don't want people to have to think about, oh, I have to go update this other app somewhere. Um, what is a way that we can provide value for the service provider um, where they're already on the app? And um, so the things that, um, you know, the, the some of the primary things that we're looking at right now that we're currently building um, is one, that you could view accurate service information availability and inventory and um, be able to refer clients through this. And um, we, can, I, we can go into more detail about this later if you're interested, you can, we can chat after. Um, another is being able to request needs directly and then being able to track those needs um, and also client progress. And um, so if you're interested in finding out more about what you can do, so if you're a service provider, we would love for you to become a beta tester, which means, for example, you know, what is a good onboarding um, process for you? What, how can we make it as easy but as useful for you as possible? And um, you know, what are the different features that are most important, um, highest priority? And then if you're a volunteer, for example, you know, if you want, if you're interested in street outreach, um, join a DAO. Or, you know, if you're interested in any of these, that would probably be the first, um, that would be early access, essentially where um, you would, we would test it out with everyone in the DAOs first, and it would facilitate the different um, actions that are being taken by the DAOs. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you.